Costa Rica, one of the most biodiverse countries on the planet. I think I traveled for about 36 hours. I drove to Edinburgh, took a night bus to London, had a flight to Houston, and then my last flight to San Jose, Costa Rica. I stayed in San Jose for the night, but I had no intentions of staying there for long. So very next morning, I picked up a local SIM card, I got some colones, which is the currency in Costa Rica, and I got a bus headed south on the Pan American Highway that took me up the hills of the Talamanca Mountains. Now here I wanted to find a bird that I've been reading a lot about from one of my now favorite naturalists, Alexander Scooch, and that is the resplendent Quetzal. I'm excited as a little kid. I've just arrived at my accommodation for the first three nights. San Gerardo is this valley that I'm in, and it just is so nice. I'm in a little kind of cabin for myself. I have a little double bed here and a single bed there. It's only me though. I don't need all that. And they've given me probably one of the best cabin that's here, I feel. Check out this view. I just went into full freak out mode there. My own one crashed and it kept crashing. And I've looked it up though, and there is an update for it. So I'm really hoping that's gonna fix it. But I've just arrived in Costa Rica. First time I pull out my camera to photograph a bird and just goes blank. And I, I can't even press the shutter. Yank the battery out, try again, same thing happens. So unfortunately the update for my own one didn't work. I kept getting an error, but there was no pattern to it, and there wasn't really anything to do but let the professionals have a look. Which meant that, most likely for the rest of this trip, I wouldn't have my new OM1. Now, I was devastated, but I couldn't let it ruin my trip. I still had my backup EM1 Mark II, and I was determined I'm going to make the best of it. It is a pretty dreary and miserable day out, and it has been this way all night and all morning. So I think let's just take advantage, put on my waterproof, and let's try and get some birds and rain streaks in this weather. Right away I get a little Rufus collared sparrow on the branch right across this hedge. And some hummingbirds, I think. Just after a couple of minutes out, Anna who works here came and dragged me up here because there was a splendid cat soul scene here. And they came out and made these sounds. Yeah. 
And the older woman works it. She knows the call of it. She was calling out for it. Absolutely amazing. You know, standing up in this mossy tree here, I just could see the side of its body. Couldn't get a good photo. I tried to get a video and then it flew off in an instant. Grabbed an avocado and then went away. If I got the call down right though, I think I can still hear it every now and then. I'm hoping it's still in the area. Gracias. Gracias. What, what is your, um, do you have a favorita? Si. Two? Uh, ah, si. Favorita? Ah, si, favorito, si, de tucan y quetzalos. Very good. Quetzalos? <laughs> quetzalos es muy lindo. Si. Si. Mm -hmm. Cool. Gracias. And uh, I asked her as well what her, what her favorite bird is. And I, I think she said that the quetzal is close to her heart. She made a gesture towards her heart. So. Um, she's super nice and she's just so upbeat and always walking around here singing and just cheerful. Uh, I'm trying my very limited Spanish to talk to her. is feeding on the scraps that the birds aren't getting. I think I've been here for a couple hours now. Quetzal hasn't come back. But I think I've got some really cool images of birds in the rain. So I'm very happy with that. That's kind of what I came out for today. I think I can still hear it down here though. Right, I'm gonna give it another five minutes and then head back and warm up and dry. <laughs> Quarter to five in the morning. I've been up since two o'clock. I went to bed at eight yesterday. Stupid jet lag. I'm in my little cabin and it's really cold at night. 
my watch actually says that I'm up at 2700 meters, so I'm up quite high. Today though, I'm going to look for the resplendent Quetzal. The really nice lady who works here, the kitchen, when she heard that I was going to go out early in the morning, she gave me like a tiny little breakfast thing, all wrapped up in foil and a banana. And just these kind of really nice sweet breads. I'm just having that with my coffee just now, ready to head down the hill. I have about a five kilometer walk down the hill ahead of me. Um, so, so yeah, just trying to get down some coffee, a little bit of food, and pack my bag and go. I need to go. So I've been reading two of Alexander Scritch's books, The Imperative Call and A Naturalist in Costa Rica. Now for 18 months, he stayed south of where I was staying in San Gerardo, and there he had identified and studied the lives of 218 species of birds. But there was one bird that he hadn't studied, and that was the resplendent Quetzal. It was a bird that he had first become aware of as a schoolboy when he had a postage stamp from Guatemala with the Quetzal on it. Now the resplendent Quetzal is a national bird of Guatemala, and is known there as the freedom bird. It was believed that it would rather take its own life than live in captivity. In the 1930s, when Scooch traveled through Costa Rica, there was a high demand for skins of birds to museums and private collectors. Way ahead of his time, Scooch didn't want to take a bird's life to have it posed in collections. So he collected plant specimens instead to finance his study of the behavior of living birds. Now the behavior of tropical birds by Western scientists at the time was pretty much unknown and filled with false assumptions. As most field workers would shoot the birds long before any behavior was observed and recorded. To study the Quetzal, Scritch moved to Cordillera Central, between the volcanoes Poas and Barba, where he stayed on and off again for over a year in some truly harsh conditions. Now, one of the features that makes the Quetzal such an attractive bird is its long tail, or rather, it's the upper tail coverts that can grow up to 85 centimeters on the males before the breeding season. Now, until Scritch began his studies, it was thought that the Quetzal had two holes in the nesting tree so that the male could enter one side and get out on the other side without messing up its long, beautiful tail. Now, Scooch found that a pair would share incubation duties, and he observed the long male's tail hang down from the nesting hole when the male was on the eggs. Now, it would blend in perfectly because it would look like a fern just hanging off the tree. A male will actually damage his tail during this active time of year and shed it completely by the end of the breeding season. Now in the past, tail feathers of the resplendent Quetzal has been used as headwear for Aztec kings and chiefs. It's reported that natives would snare the birds and then pluck the tail feathers and release them to renew their plumage. As Scritch writes in his books that they took more thought to conservation than the people who wrestled their land from them. Definitely not alone, there's quite a few people here. It's really cool, you can actually see the little, small little avocados on these trees, and that's what they go for. So I'm not seeing it for a while now. And showed up for a few minutes and stood there for probably, I don't know, 40 minutes after and people started to spread out. Apparently I was told that they only feed a little bit in the morning and then they head off and hide because they're so colorful and they stand out in the environment quite a bit so you can't hang, afford to hang about in the open all day. I'm incredibly grateful I got to see it in the beginning didn't get to see it again, but got a photo of it, got to view it, and it looks absolutely amazing. Now I was told that it doesn't have the long tails. They don't tend to have that this time of year. They lose them when they go into their interbreeding, and uh, they kind of get them back, I think around September, I was told. Some really nice and helpful guides around here who are 
just all too happy to share their knowledge. Now though, I got 5k of uphill to trek.